Now, this has been a pretty interesting year, especially for Apple when they released their Mac Studio, a professional grade workstation in a sense, running the Mac OS for the professionals that need to do creative work, that need to do 3D rendering and so forth. And yes, it is powerful. It really does a great job in terms of efficiency and just produces sheer power. However, there are some limitations. Now, number one, you can't upgrade it at all. It's pretty much uh, sealed in, so you cannot upgrade it yourself. Apple made sure of that. So no expandability in terms of the RAM or the storage. But if you want a Windows alternative in terms of a mini workstation that packs a punch under the hood, but is expandable, I think I have your solution. This is the HP Z2 Mini G9 here for 2022. This thing not only looks great in my opinion, it has toolless entry, you can expand the RAM, you can expand the storage. It's got a 12th gen Intel processor that's unbelievable when it comes to multi-core and single core performance. So it's really good in that regard. It looks better in my opinion than the Mac Studio in a lot of ways. And it's not as tall as the Mac Studio. I think it's a really nice look here. We're gonna get into it in more. It's very impressive. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the HP Z2 Mini G9 here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. And according to the HP website, it has a starting price of $19.79. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, one thing to note, that configuration has the Core i7, whereas I have the Core i9 here. It's the 12900K. And this review unit also has the RTX A2000 GPU. We're going to get into the numbers in a little bit, but they're billing this as the world's most powerful mini workstation. Let's see if it lives up to the billing. And the good news is it's showing that it does have limited stock with an ability to ship within one business day. So it looks like they have some supply. So if you're in the market for a powerful mini workstation, this might be your ticket. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now they give you a 280 watt power adapter along with the extension cord. And I like the fact they include a mouse and a keyboard in the box at no additional cost. Something you don't get with something, say, like the Mac Studio. And finally, you get a stand as well that allows you to stand it vertically or you can use it horizontally. That's up to you. You could even mount it on the back of a monitor. That's thanks to the visa mount that it has. And it has a really nice solid industrial build with its all metal design and rock solid build quality. Now it's starting at 2.4 kilograms or 5.29 pounds. It definitely has a little bit of heft to it, but remember it's packing a big punch under the hood and it has a small footprint at the same time. All right, let's talk about the ports. On the front is your power button. On the side is a USB-A port, two USB-C ports, and a universal audio jack. And on the back is your power port, two display port out ports you get four mini display ports three usba ports and an rj45 ethernet port all in all pretty good port selection but one thing that is notably missing there's no sd card reader that would have been great to have as well and you also get some options for additional ports as well as you see here and it's pretty much a toolless entry to get inside this unit, which I absolutely love. Something you can't do with the Mac Studio. That's what differentiates this from the Apple offering. And this easy access is great if you want to expand out the RAM as the user or the storage. So that's going to be great. Now, in order to access the RAM slots, you have to remove the fan as I did here. And this easy upgradability allows you to upgrade the RAM. Now, my review unit has 64 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 RAM. You can get this in either ECC or non-ECC RAM. And of course, it's running in dual channel mode. And it's also the faster rank 8 RAM, which we like to see. And as I mentioned earlier, this unit has the RTX A2000 GPU from NVIDIA, and here it is. Once you remove that, you get access to the M.2 slots for the SSDs. Now, my review unit has one terabyte of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage, and as you can see from these reads and writes, excellent results. 
ended as Wi-Fi 6C along with a Bluetooth 5.2 combo card. And the good news is that's slotted in as well. So if you want to change it out down the road, you have that option. Now, both are working very well. I've had no issues with either the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. All right, let's talk about performance. And I've been very impressed with what this thing can output. Now, this is running that Core i9-12900K. It's a 16-core processor paired with that RTX A2000 GPU that has 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory. Now, it also has some really good performance when it comes to the PC Mark 10, which is a good indicator of everyday use. Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media. Media, it all worked well. Check out the multi-core score of both the Geekbench and the Cinebench scores, which really is impressive here. Very, very impressive numbers indeed. And when you compare it to some of its competition, you can see it outperformed the Mac Studio, both the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra when it comes to single core performance. That's very impressive. And when it comes to the multi-core performance, it actually outpaced the Mac Studio with the M1 Max, but it didn't do quite as well as the M1 Ultra in that Mac Studio. And to show you how really impressive that multi-core performance is, it scored over 20,000 in the Cinebench R23 multi-core score, not quite as good as the M1 Ultra in that Mac Studio, but outpaced the M1 Max in that same category. And it'll do really well with things such as Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing in general has been great on this. The A2000 is actually a pretty capable GPU to get that kind of work done. It also could do 3D rendering. It also could do CAD work. So if you're that professional looking at this mini workstation, this may be your ticket, especially if you want something with a small footprint that packs a punch. And when it comes to the thermals, I was super impressed. Now, I ran the Prime 95 stress test to put this under maximum load. It will reach a core temperature of around 98 to 100 degrees and maintain clock speeds. Excellent performance here. Very little, if any, thermal throttling. In fact, I didn't notice any thermal throttling, let's be honest. Now, that fan is a pretty big fan considering the footprint and size of this unit, but it did a great job not only cooling, but it remained relatively quiet. In fact, it was whisper quiet, never breaking 43 decibels. And when it comes to the audio, there's a single mono speaker here. Not very good. It's very tinny. Doesn't get loud. There is no bass. It's there for something in a pinch. Not really there to enjoy music or any kind of vocals or anything like that. You're going to want to use your own sound system, good speakers, good pair of headphones. It depends on whatever you like. You'll have to bring your own audio here. This is not what this is designed to do, but it's there in a pinch. That single mono speaker will be better than nothing. That's for sure. Now, HP also sent over a monitor for me to check out with this unit it's the z25xs g3 it's a 25 inch monitor it's an ips monitor with the z line and i'm very impressed with it it's got a qhd resolution and it's lived up to the billing it's got good color accuracy and good coverage of the color gamut so if you are that professional that does creative work video editing photoshop lightroom this will not disappoint you and I love the fact that it takes less than five minutes to put this thing together straight out of the box. Kudos to HP. And I have to say it's been an excellent monitor, especially paired with the Z2 Mini G9. Now, I love the fact that you get a lot of adjustments vertically and also pulling it forward to give you the proper viewing angle each and every time. And the numbers are looking good on this, although I wish it got a little bit brighter than the 266 nits that it can produce, although it's in an indoor scenario and it's a matte display, no unnecessary glare or reflection, so not much of a factor there. So it's definitely bright enough for any of your use. It's got a 0.29 black levels, which are excellent, got good contrast, good white point. It has great Delta E score of 1.06, meaning this is a very color accurate display. And it has excellent coverage of the color gamut, as you see by the numbers. So if you're a content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, color grading, this may be your ticket, especially with this great mini workstation. And I like the fact they include an HDMI cable, a Visa mount adapter, a cable manager, a USB-C to Type-C cable, a USB Type-C to Type-A cable, and the power cord and the DisplayPoint 1.4 cable. So a lot there. I also like the menu system on this, very intuitive. And I like the power button, which doubles as a jog dial to navigate through and cycle through the menu system. 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Z2 Mini G9 here for 2022? And I think if you're looking for that Mac Studio kind of thing on the Windows side, where you have the ability to upgrade it, unlike the Mac Studio, we have the ability to expand out the storage, where you like the aesthetics better on it. I think it looks better than the Mac Studio, in my opinion. Mac Studio looks like a, they stack two Mac Minis on top of each other. Excellent performance, both single core and multi-core performance with that 12th gen processor, with the RTX a2000 graphics it's going to be great for the professional doing cad work solid work stuff like that i'm very impressed with what hp did here and i like the starting price i think for the professional that's looking at this it's not a bad price and i think it's very competitive especially when you do compare it to something like the mac studio but i'm curious to know what you think let me know in that comment section below but i think they've got a winner on their hands so what do you think about the HP Z2 Mini G9 Mini Workstation? Very powerful performance, really nice looks, nice small footprint, but it doesn't skimp on the power. It produces good numbers. If you are that professional, if you are somebody that is looking at that Mac Studio, you may want to take a look at this, especially if you're into expandability, if you want to expand out the RAM and storage, you have that option, something you don't get with the Mac Studio. Now, I hopefully will get a Mac Studio at some point in this channel here to check out. So stay tuned, I can do a head to head. If that does come to fruition, I will of course let you know. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I think it's priced competitively with that device and I think it brings a lot to the table, not only with the expansion and also the power that it produces. If you are that professional, this one may be one to look at. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. Thank you.